Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Mayor Karen K. Go. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to call to order the 515 regular city council meeting of August 23rd, 2023. Welcome to all of you. We're so glad that you've joined us. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Gonzalez. Councilmember Arias. Councilmember Weir. I am here. Councilmember Smith. I'm here. Councilmember Freeman. Here. Councilmember Gray. Here. And Councilmember Core. Thank you. We have the pleasure tonight of having Pastor Hananiah E. Rupp, Senior Pastor of the Bakersfield Southside Seventh-day Adventist Church, to offer the invocation. And Pastor, we're so thankful for your hosting the Bakersfield Safe Streets partnership meetings there, and thank you for letting us use that facility. Following the invocation, Jasmine Celadon, who's a senior at Bakersfield High School, will lead us in the pledge. She is the Kern High School District's board's new, newly appointed student board member. She's attended one meeting already representing the youth, and she is on the varsity volleyball team as a driller and plans to go to law school, University of Irvine first and then law school. And so at this time, would you all please join me in standing? Pastor. Madam Mayor, thank you for the invita invocation. Our God, we pray for courage to address our blind spots in this meeting. We have such a full agenda, and there will be things that we are not able to address or to see. But we pray for courage to address those blind spots and patience to hear differing opinions and wisdom on how we vote in these things. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated, Pastor. Thank you very much. Jasmine, thank you very much. And congratulations again on being selected among your many colleagues. Here are a few guidelines to help our meeting run smoothly. We'd request that you turn off your phones. Please be courteous in the use of cameras and videos and for safety reasons and as a courtesy to others. No signs are allowed in the council chamber or in the lobby. Applause is allowed during the presentations portion of the meeting, but not during other portions of the meeting. Everyone in attendance is expected to adhere to the rules of decorum established by resolution of the city council. Failure to abide by the city's rules of decorum, including any disruptive behavior that interferes with our ability to have an orderly and efficient meeting prevents the city council from conducting the business of the city. Behavior that disrupts the meeting includes repetitive statements, going off topic, shouting, outbursts from the audience, and surpassing the two-minute time limit. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Presentations item 4A, proclamation to Priscilla Russell declaring Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in Bakersfield during September 2023. It's my honor to be joined by Priscilla Russell and Claudia Garrow, and you'll introduce yourselves in just a while. Colleagues, childhood cancer is the number one leading cause of death by disease in children in the United States. Each year, more than 15,700 children between the ages of birth and age 19 are diagnosed with cancer. Every three minutes, a family hears the devastating words that their child has been diagnosed with cancer. Hear these words of the proclamation. 
whereas cancer knows no boundaries afflicting all ethnic and socioeconomic groups, and whereas increased awareness and research will help educate the public on early diagnosis and provide readily accessible clinical care to patients in need. Whereas dedicated health professionals, agencies, and organizations have made it their mission to help children with cancer and provide educational, emotional, and financial support to their families. And whereas children deserve the chance to dream big, discover new interests, and live to their absolute potential while fighting this disease. And now, therefore, I, Karen Go, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield, <laughs> you hereby proclaim September 2023 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in our city and urge all residents to join our city in reaffirming our commitment to fighting childhood cancer. It's dated this 23rd day of August. Priscilla is here on behalf of the Bakersfield Childhood Cancer Community, and she'll introduce her colleague. Priscilla, it's my honor to be able to present this to you. Okay, you can introduce her. Thank you, Mayor Go and Council. I'm going to go ahead and have um, Claudia go first, okay? Good evening, uh, Mayor Go, council members, staff, and guests. My name is Claudia Guerrero, and I am the mom of Gigi Guerrero, Giselle Guerrero, but she goes by Gigi. On February 14, 2019, oof, at 12.33 p.m., to be exact, cancer became part of my life. And the doctor pulls me aside to tell me that it wasn't what she expected. Giselle has acute lymphomastic leukemia. I was given the title that no mom ever wants. I'm a cancer mom. My daughter Gigi was diagnosed at the age of 10. I know God gives us what we can handle, but how can anyone handle this beast, especially a child? I told Gigi everything was going to be okay, but was it? We spent countless days in the hospital going through scans, biopsies, etc. My daughter handled one too many rounds of chemotherapy, taking up to 18 pills a day to save her life during this journey. She had so many side effects that affected her back then and still affect her now. Cancer has changed us. We look at things differently now. As a family and as an individual, we have changed. We don't take anything for granted. My daughter understands that her life will be different forever, but cancer will not define her and cancer will always be her story. I wake up every day and embrace how fortunate we are to have made it this far. Every accomplishment she has, I shed a tear from my daughter on, on, on feeling how she feels inside. Every day I wear a gold heart pin with the gold ribbon to remind me that she is a warrior and that cancer is our story. Gigi now is 15 years old. She is the founder of her own nonprofit, Gigi the Warrior, helping families affected by childhood cancer. She's a sophomore class representative for Highland High School FFA. She's the ASB representative for her sophomore class. She was a nominee for the Bakersfield Beautiful Awards, a candidate for Student Visionaries of the Year with the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. So I can say she's doing great now. Unfortunately, cancer remains the most common cause of death by disease for children in America. Survivors of childhood cancer often suffer long-term health consequences due to the side effects of the treatments and regimens available for children today. We need your help. You and your colleagues are a big in the community and can help us by raising awareness and encouraging research into cures for pediatric cancers. We pray that your hearts and minds as our city leaders will be moved and help us spread childhood cancer awareness. On behalf of the kids with cancer, cancer survivors, and those gone too soon, I come before you to ask that you go gold with us and wear gold for Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Thank you. Sorry, I got taken back.
Okay. Psalms um, 127, verse 3. The Passion Translation says, Children are God's love gift. They are heaven's generous reward. I know as a parent of a young adult and a couple of teenage boys, I have moments where I feel like they are not heaven's generous reward. Those moments become so amplified in my mind when I see the expression of one's face as I request that they clean their room or else I will have an additional cell phone in my possession. It is at that point that I look up to heaven and I say, Lord, really? <laughs> it was April 18th, 2014, a day I will never forget, that turned our world upside down. My children were babies. At the time, they were 4, 6, and 14. Little did they know that mommy was in the fight for her life. I was diagnosed with breast cancer and underwent surgery, severe treatments, and I'm feeling the ramification of, of those treatments today. I thank God, however, that I'm able to stand before you and complain about the effects of treatments. I call myself blessed because of the legacy of women that came before me that rose awareness in the community and around the world for breast cancer. Unfortunately, the voices are small and little for children. We are the voices, parents, uncles, grandmas, grandpas. We are the voices. Um, uh, Mayor Go already gave all the statistics, which I also have down here, so I'm going to go past that part. Um, now, I just want you to think of the number. She gave the number. But imagine in Bakersfield City, all of our elementary schools, our high schoolers, out of that group, if just one of each school had been diagnosed with cancer, or have been, and we may not even know, one student from every school in Bakersfield, that's, that's the ratio that we're looking at. And it's something that we have to be aware of and keep in mind. Yes, research is still being done, but it's so minute. Only 4% of every research dollar goes to researching um, cures for children. And then at that point, they're still guinea pigs. It's a test. We're going to see if this works. We don't know. That's where they're at. I'm so blessed to say that that didn't happen to me because all the women before me went through all of that, and I didn't have to. But children are still fighting, and they're children. Um, I realize, of course, we are a society of individuals that don't think of such things as childhood cancer until it becomes a reality to us. If I were to be completely honest with you, I myself was not fully involved in cancer awareness of any type because, frankly, it hadn't happened to me. We have a tendency to wear blinders on specific diseases or illnesses until they become a reality or were impacted. Now, I know I was made for such a time as this. I do know what it feels like to go through treatment, and at least for me, there were options. Cancer is the number one killer for children under the age of 20, aside from the household accidents. The only reason why I can stand before you today is because of previous women and families were a voice and an advocate for me. Therefore, due to my passion for children and childhood cancer, I feel imperative to raise awareness within our community in hopes that it will venture outside these city lines. The way we can do that is right now is to talk about it, raise awareness. So now when my son is not following my instructions and I'm beginning to roll my eyes, I can still look at him and say, son, do X, Y, and Z. And who am I? Well, we have a woman right here that went through it. We take it for granted. Life is a precious gift. I want you to know that in Bakersfield, we're starting works. You guys like to eat lunch and dinner. This is your opportunity. Agave Grill, when you mention Gigi the Warrior, proceeds go toward her nonprofit organization. She fought cancer, she's a survivor, and she's helping those that are fighting now. Also, flight, if you've got grandkids and 
nieces, nephew that like to jump around. You mentioned Gigi the Warrior. A percentage of the, what is um, bought from them goes toward her nonprofit. Also, um, Mesa Grill, same thing. Those are just a few places in Bakersfield that are acknowledging the fight. You get to have that opportunity to say, I partake in that and I participate in that. Wear a gold ribbon. And when somebody asks you, why are you wearing gold ribbons? You say, it's to raise childhood cancer awareness in our community so we can fight together. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. Mayor, if I may comment, I just want to thank uh, them for their advocacy and for all the work they're doing in our community and to let them know that we all love Gigi the Warrior and we're rooting for her for a prosperous and successful life ahead. Claudia, Priscilla, thank you so much for your advocacy for God's love gift. And colleagues, as you can tell, this is so much more than just statistics. You can see from the emotion the reality. So we commit to raising awareness as a council. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Public statements. Thank you. In keeping with the council's resolution, the public statements portion is now divided into two periods. There's a period for items listed on the meeting agenda and items not on the meeting agenda. Statements for items listed on tonight's agenda are given a two minute time limit, 20 minutes total per agenda item. The consent calendar as a whole constitutes one agenda item. Statements regarding items not listed on the agenda are given a two minute time limit, 20 minutes total. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, give them to the clerk who will give copies to the council. If you're here to make a public statement, please fill out a public speaker card and give your completed card to the city clerk. We ask that you mark whether you're here to speak on an item listed on tonight's agenda or in a matter not on the agenda. Speakers who do not identify specific agenda item will be presumed speakers for the non-agenda portion. Those speakers will be called during the non-agenda portion of the meeting. We're very interested and concerned with your issues. However, due to the public notice requirement of the Brown Act, the council can't take action when an item isn't on the agenda. Council can, however, refer your matter to committee or request that staff contact you. Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers regarding items listed on tonight's agenda? Mayor, we have not received any speaker cards for items listed on tonight's agenda. Thank you. How about speakers for items not listed on tonight's agenda? We have received six speaker cards for items not listed on tonight's agenda. The first public speaker is Tracy Dominguez. Thank you, and then would you go ahead and just announce the next one so the person can be prepared? Mary Lee Schreider and Penny Martinez. You can go ahead and just wait there. Uh, yeah, just be ready. Uh, welcome. Oh, oh, that's emotional, because mine is emotional, so. Hello, I am Tracy Dominguez. I am a mother. A and a patient advocate and a long life resident of Kern County. I would like to invite you to the Medical Board of California in-person meeting this week. It will be held at the Doubletree Hilton Hotel tomorrow, 3000 Camino Del Rio Road. Both uh, days are Thursday and Friday, starting at 9 a.m. in the San Joaquin room. I'm asking this personally for me and many mothers and grandmothers and fathers here in Bakersfield who have lost their daughter and grandchildren or suffered a long life harm due to maternal and medical negligence. I know this all too well because I lost my daughter, Demi, and my grandson, Malachi. 
on April 19, 2019, tragically, to needlessly to maternal negligence. The Medical Board of California typically meets in San Francisco at this time, but they have listened to our advocacy for the, fat, for the last few years and listened to our calls to bring this meeting to Bakersfield, and they did. They want to hear from our families as to know how they can better improve health care in Bakersfield and throughout the Central Valley. We sent out an invitation to all of you by email. I'm asking for your support, Bakersfield families, and come to the meeting and welcome the Medical Board to Bakersfield. Please come out and support the families who have worked so hard to endure the health care. It, it will be a little safer for all our families in the future. And I hope you guys do all come out. And uh, I am my daughter's voice and my grandson's. He lived 18 hours. And uh, thank you, Ms. Dominguez. So sorry for the loss of Demi and Malachi. And we will be there. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Mar Marilee Schreider yes. and Penny Martinez. Mm -hmm. Good evening, my name is Mary Lee Schreider, and I'm here on behalf of the Bakersfield Republican Women Federated. Joining me is Penny Martinez, a fellow member and an Air Force veteran. We're here tonight to bring awareness of and garner support for National Wreaths Across America Day on December 16th. This event honors local veterans interred at the Bakersfield National Cemetery by placing Christmas wreaths on grave markers for the holiday season. Now, in order to do this and to ensure that every vet is honored, we're going to need 7,500 wreaths. The good news is we are already halfway there with 3,843 wreaths sponsored to date, which means we still have 3,657 uh, 3, um, 3, to go and only a few months left to get them. Sadly, for the past two years, the event was short more than 2,000 wreaths, leaving family members and friends heartbroken that they weren't able to honor their veteran. That's why our organization uh, got involved with the project, and in our effort to raise wreath sponsorships, we join 15 other local groups, including the Bakersfield Police Department and the Civil Air Patrol. We are truly a community that honors its veterans. The wreaths are $17 each, and when you order via the Bakersfield Republican Women Portal, for every two wreaths purchased, a third one will be sent at no cost. The web address to order is wreathsacrossamerica.org backslash CA0797. If we reach our goal and every veteran is honored, we'll be among the top 5% of national cemeteries with more than 5,000 graves to do so. And in a patriotic community like Bakersfield, uh, 7,500 should be no problem. So council members, we are asking you today not only to join us by sponsoring a wreath or two, but to actively encourage your constituency to, to do likewise. And we have some what we hope are helpful handouts for you tonight. And not to add any pressure on the Bakersfield council members, but when we presented this at the Kern County Board of Supervisors yesterday, um, Supervisor Leticia uh, Perez pledged to donate 50 wreaths. So just sticking Thank it you, out Ms. there. Thank you, Ms. Schreider. Uh, we appreciate it. It's always a beautiful event. Next speaker, please. Anche Lauer, followed by Eddie Lane, followed by Yvette Ward. Welcome, Mr. Lane. Well, I'm Eddie Lane. I'm not Auntie Lauer. She'll be here in a minute. Um, this is with regard to an issue we've talked about for many meetings. And really, there are two overriding issues. Uh, one is fairness for a whole community, and the other is accountability. Um, the reason we came back is because of an article in the Californian by our Lois Henry, who knows pretty much everything about water. And the critical point that she delineated during, during this uh, article on uh, August 11th was that had to do with the weir. And the weir, we're passing around pictures of the weir. Um, 
There are six major, this has to do with the lawsuit that's been going on for a long time. There are six major diversion points or weirs along the river from west of Hart Park to the town all the way to Enos Lane. The city is the sole operator of those weirs. The reason why that's so important is because the county of Kern is not part of the lawsuit. And the issues that we have brought before you have to do with the county-city relationship. The, the weirs and the water below the weirs, that has to do with the irrigation districts. So above the weirs is city-county. Those issues need to be addressed, and we've talked about those for, for quite a while. The other set of issues are intra-city issues. A year ago, there was a meeting that involved Bring Back the Kern, um, Rich O'Neill from, I think most of you know Rich, from the, the Kern River Parkway Foundation, myself and other, other representatives, and there was an agreement that there needed to never be a repeat of what happened in the summer of 2022 when the small lakes of River Lake were, were drained while there was overseeding of the tees at the Kern River Golf Course. So the idea was a collaboration there between those three departments, a formal collaboration, so the public would know what's going on. Now, that was a year ago. Uh, that is not part of the lawsuit. That's something that the city can do. So we're asking, there are a lot of issues here, we, we passed them out, we're asking that those issues be addressed and they be addressed in a, in a reasonable time frame. Thank you for your, this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Lane. Next speaker, please. Okay, Welcome. good afternoon, um, Mayor Go and members of the City Council and City Manager team. So my name is Antje Lauer. I'm a member of the Sierra Club, the Kern Cavea chapter, and I'm supporting what Mr. Lane has brought forward here. <laughs> and I'm also a member of the Department of Biology, um, a microbiologist actually. But I'm on a lot of committees and I know how things should be handled to have successful outcomes. And I wanna bring up a, two po a couple points. So I said I'm supporting Mr. Lane today in his, his issue of water conservation, and there were two referrals that had been made by Councilmember Arias on um, February 8th this year, and Councilmember Kaur on June 28th to Mr. Clegg, the city manager, on that issue that Mr. Eddie Lane just pointed out. No outcome, no notification of that the city is working on had been made to Mr. Lane or anybody else. So I wonder if Mr. Clegg could make a statement about why this is not being handled. There were two referrals by two council members and nothing has been done. Or are you working on it and we don't know about it? Or is it a blind spot like the Reverend mentioned at the beginning of our meetings? So it would be really nice if we would see that there's some progress and that concerns of citizens, residents of Bakersfield are being taken serious. And you know, by, by working on committees, you're always looking for good leadership skills. So you all have good leadership skills, but you should show that you follow up on things. So have you followed up with Mr. Clegg on those issues? You probably have, but maybe Dr. Clegg said something to you, Mr. Clegg said something to you that we are not aware of. We would like to hear that you have been taking this issue serious because water <clears throat> is a precious good. So the city is working on the climate action plan, right? So water conservation should be part of the action plan. And this issue that Mr. Lane brought up should be part of this kind of discussion. And we would like to hear really that this issue is being put on the agenda of one of the future meetings to discuss this further and to learn more about it. And hopefully Lauer, have it on a dashboard in the future. Ms. Lauer, your time is up. Can you yeah. bring your comments to a close, please? Yeah, I was just ending my sentence. It would be nice to have it on a dashboard that we can all see that there's progress. You know, that's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Arias. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you both for bringing this back up to our attention multiple times and continuing to uh, continue on with the fight. Uh, City Manager or Madam City Attorney, do you have anything to comment in response to those comments? Yeah, thanks, Council Mayor. Just a couple of things. Uh, first, um, we have developed some staff materials that are responsive to elements of the inquiries that we can respond to. As was noted, this is very closely tied with pending litigation uh, or actually existing litigation. And Mr. Hallam has been in communication with Mr. Lane um, more than once on this subject matter. We have not delivered 
We have not delivered uh, formal um, documents, um, again, because of some of the sensitivity around the, the existing litigation. So how do we maintain accountability while also protecting the confidentiality of some of the litigation that's in progress? I, f I find it just a, a tad bit frustrating that, you know, it, I can imagine many other circumstances where, you know, we have to continue to do our job, provide good quality services to the community of Bakersfield, uh, where we have to hold folks accountable to do their job um, and ensure that, you know, there's fair and equitable practices and regulations that everybody's held accountable to, while also allowing the attorneys to do their work. Um, it, I, I'm just, I'm looking for answers. Is there an opportunity for us to uh, maybe maybe a select a uh, few of us as council members and staff to connect with the county um, so that we can begin to get some answers to some of these questions that they've been bringing up? Uh, I think it's a good question, council member. I think your frustration is not singular. Um, we have had several conversations with the county uh, from the staff to staff level. And um, uh, I, I don't think that the, the answers have... Um, uh, necessarily, we, we haven't received, you know, a documentation that you know, answers all of our questions, and so at, at the elected official to elected official, if you want to appeal to your colleagues at the board of supervisors, that could be an appropriate next action. Um, I, and I, I don't say this lightly, but I, I think respectfully, uh, we don't have an accountability mechanism over the county outside of litigation ourselves, and so that really would be. You know, the the only step beyond our collegial efforts to say we ought to, all ought to work, you know, well with one another, um, it's it's litigation. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, curious to know how my colleagues feel, but um, I would certainly welcome an opportunity to sit down with staff at the county level and and also members of the board of supervisors so we can get some answers to these questions. Thanks. Councilmember Core. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Adias. I want to echo the, the sentiment shared. I, when advocates come to our council meetings and uh, communicate to us a concern, um, you know, I think it's our duty and our responsibility to respond in a way that shows progress uh, at the very least. Um, so I would be happy to join the conversations with Councilmember Adias as well. And my question is, um, you know, I, since being on the council, I've seen a number of questions or documents pre prepared by our advocates from the Sierra Club and from the community um, on this topic. And my question is, even to this document, are there, if there are things in this document that we can answer, can we prepare that for this meeting or prepare that um, as a response to some of the questions that have been posed today? Uh, are there elements within this that we are able to answer? And if there are, or if there aren't, maybe we also share these are the elements we cannot answer. I think if the advocates are sharing that they have not received a response, um, I would rather they have a response as to the things we cannot respond to because of litigation. But if there's elements in this that we can respond to and provide some guidance or what kind of work is being done, I think that's better than no answer at all if that's what the status is. Um, but I myself would like to see a little bit more progress on this and, and have some more conversation around this that doesn't, again, violate our current lit lit litigation, as Councilman Radius has said, um, but also lets our advocates know that they are not bringing these things to our attention um, without any uh, efforts being taken on our end. So I, I feel that's the sentiment in the room right now. Uh, two, two responses, uh, sentiment is noted. Uh, just to your question about can we respond, we'll review the letter, I haven't had a chance to read through it yet, but we'll review the letter and aspects that we can respond to, we can do that. Thank you. Just gonna give a minute for uh, our guests in the back to sit down, please. Next speaker, please. Yvette Ward, followed by O.C. Crawford. Hello, Mayor, Welcome. Vice Mayor, all the committee members. My name is Yvette Ward. 
I am a resident of 2200 Roosevelt. My family moved there. I'm part of Ward 2. My family moved there in 1981. I've been there with my daughter since uh, 2006. And it has progressively gotten worse. I, um, this is not my first time here. And thank you, um, City Councilman, City Councilwoman Carr, because that's where I am right now. I'm here because when I was here last time, I got no response, although it was stated at that time that I would hear from someone, but I didn't. I am at the end of the cul-de-sac. We have the east, east side, we have the west side of the cul-de-sac. I am the only resident on Roosevelt Street that is directly connected to the state line, which is on the other side of 58, um, 58 West, and I'm on the north side of the street. Okay, so what that looked like is that right, right in front of my yard, I have a chain link fence that is broke down, repaired, um, uh, refurbished. It's bent, it's halfway up, halfway down. On the other end, there is another chain link fence that's, that we, I have done everything that I possibly can to keep it from looking like it's a desolated place. My hands, I'm tired. I have, a, I have a, a sound barrier wall on the south side of the freeway that allows all of the sound to bounce from that side to my side. What does that look like? That means that as an ICU technician that works at Kern Medical Center ICU, I'm tired. I can't get any sleep. Why? Because I have diesels that are running up and down the freeway, and I'm not complaining about the freeway. I'm complaining about the lack thereof from my side of the street. I'm getting it all. I have never seen the amount of cracks that have accumulated, not only in the foundation of the sidewalk in my driveway, but also in my house. I have experienced things coming off the wall because of the sound of the freeway. So it is exhausting. I have tumbleweeds that are extreme, that are directly there. I ran out of time, I'm so sorry, I need to get on agenda. I have tumbleweeds. Caltran is coming out, and they're getting the tumbleweeds, they're taking them up, but they're stacking them in my front yard, and they're not taking them away. I have only one incident that, that the workforce has came out, and they have walked through and picked up a little trash, but my yard is full of tumbleweeds. My grass is gone. I have to pull up all of my grass because the- Thank the, you, Ms. The, Ward. The, uh, we, we hear your concerns, and our vice mayor is going to offer some comments at this point. Okay, thank you. No, thank you so much, Ms. Ward. I appreciate you bringing this to, the, to my attention, to our attention again. Um, it's, it's actually- quite appropriate that you bring it up today. I was having a conversation earlier today regarding this particular matter. Um, but I do want to make a referral tonight that we uh, address this particular section of the 58 as it affects the residents on um, Roosevelt and um, look at uh, possible solutions that go beyond the chain link fencing, working with Caltrans, um, but, but certainly leading the effort in order for us to um, better uh, serve our residents in that particular area. Um, in other uh, places in the city, we've been able to uh, find alternatives. We know that, you know, technically speaking, a sound wall has to be warranted based on sound studies, I get that. But there are, are alternatives, including a decorative wall that may um, also um, uh, address some of the concerns that um, have been articulated here tonight. Um, so I'd like us to look at alternative solutions um, and look at the sound wall possibility, but also look at other options so that we can address these, these issues. I've been down Roosevelt myself several times. I understand what the issues are uh, firsthand, and uh, I, I'd ask that staff also take a look at that section of, uh, of Ward 2 as well. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Crawford. Good evening, Mayor Gove and um, all of the city council members. My name is O.C. Crawford. I'm with the True Love Tribe, and it's interesting. I can speak, speak in front of the uh, Kern County Board of Supervisors, no problem, but for some reason here, it's like I get nervous. <laughs> but anyway, uh, actually, I just want to uh, thank you all, city council members, for the incredible job that you do. Uh, you are appreciated. Uh, the uh, True Love Tribe has sponsored five events so far, and Mayor Karen Gold has attended four, and the one she missed, she was out of town, 
receiving an award herself. I wanted to thank her publicly for her support, her service to the community. And also uh, Councilman uh, Arias and Gonzalez, and uh, actually uh, Ms. Man Manfred Carr, uh, she attended the last one. I think she was not a council member at that time, but uh, on her way. And I believe this time Ms. Patty Gray will grace us with her presence. Uh, I just want to say thank you. And I see that um, politics is working here, at least. I think about as good as it can be. No, nobody's all on the same page on everything all of the time. I see uh, city manager Plague is doing an incredible job. Uh, does there, is everybody happy with it? Probably not. Is everybody happy with anything anybody does? Probably not. I mean, uh, it's hit and miss. But anyway, I feel that it's, uh, it's a lot of good things going on here, and I'm proud and happy to be a citizen in Bakersfield. And one of the, re the reasons is because of you all. So thank you. And I do hope you can attend the next uh, uh, event coming in September 9th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. We appreciate your generosity and the generosity of your family in providing the meals. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, are there any other speakers? That was our final speaker tonight. Thank you. Next item, please. Appointments item 6A, League of California Cities Annual Conference Appointment of Voting Delegates. Mr. Clerk. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, every year, um, the city has the opportunity to uh, name delegates to vote on behalf of the city council at the League of Cities. When the League of Cities takes up what they call resolutions, these are just position statements of the League of Cities, uh, the city can weigh in on those resolutions. Currently, there are actually no resolutions on the table. Um, um, but if one does come forward, then the voting delegate would then um, cast uh, the Bakersfield vote at the League of Cities. And typically, for those council members that are planning to be in attendance, um, their colleagues can nominate someone to um, be the voting uh, delegate. Uh, often it has been uh, council members who are on our leg legislative and litigation committee or um, a, a vice mayor or, or those that are, again, are gonna be attending the conference. Thank you, Mr. Clegg. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Council Member Kaur as the voting delegate and Council Member Arias as the alternate delegate. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, please. Appointments item 6B, appointment of Ward 1 alternate member to Youth Commission to complete an unexpired term expiring July 2024. One application for appointment has been received from Raquel Rubleda. This appointment is by ward, therefore no ballots are required. I'll call on Councilmember Arias for his Ward 1 Alternate Youth Commission member nomination. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight it is my honor to nominate Raquel Robledo for this position. Thank you. Motion. So moved. If a motion, please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And Raquel, thank you so much for your willingness to serve. Next item, please. Consent calendar item 7A through 7Z. A staff memorandum has been provided regarding item 7H, updating the report. Another staff memorandum was provided for item 7Z to correct the agenda title to read amendment number one to agreement number 2023-100. Vice Mayor. Does any member wish to recuse themselves from an item? Seeing none, uh, Council Member Smith has requested that we pull 7F tonight for separate consideration, and Council Member Weir has requested 7Z be pulled for separate consideration, and with that, I'll make a motion to adopt 
all remaining consent calendar items. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And now, Councilmember Smith with 7F. Thank you, Mayor. This is an application to LAFCO for the um, annexation of, we call it snow number seven. This project includes property that is under development with the county. Uh, we spoke with the developer last night and staff stated that they would provide a letter uh, from the city, you know, stating that uh, the project would continue under the county and still completion. And I just wanted to make sure that that happened and that uh, we're all on the same page that it's not going to switch over to the city during construction. That is confirmed, Council Member. Have we got them that letter yet or we're working on it? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clegg, I wasn't aware that there was a request for a letter, but we can prepare that letter and have it to Mr. D shortly. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Our conversation was with Paul Johnson last night. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I'll move approval. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And now, Council Member Weir with 7Z. I would uh, request that Vice Mayor mix the motion. Vice Mayor. Motion to approve item 7Z. If a motion, please cast your votes. Motion is approved with Council Member Weir voting no. Thank you. Next item, please. Hearings. Our next item is public hearings. Each side will be allowed 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes for all speakers per side. So it's important that you identify yourself, make your statement succinctly so others may speak. We'll hear statements from those opposed to the staff's recommendations first. Then we'll hear from those who would like to speak in favor of the staff's recommendation. If there's testimony on both sides, each side will be allowed a five-minute rebuttal. There's a clock on the TV screens behind me, which indicates 15 minutes. Please step to the microphone. Identify yourself, and after 14 minutes, a yellow light will come on. At the end of 15 minutes, a red light will flash, indicating your time is up. Quickly end your statement. You may ask questions during your statement, but they won't be addressed until the public hearing is closed. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, give them to the clerk. She'll provide copies to the council. Please be courteous to others who wish to speak. Madam Clerk, please read the public hearing item. Public hearing item 9A, public hearing to consider amended and restated resolution number 168-081 to confirm participation in the statewide community infrastructure program. Do we have any staff comments? Mayor and Council, uh, just a, a quick overview and if um, Randy McKee and our finance director would like to add more, we can. The, this is a um, item where we facilitate a public hearing on behalf of the applicant. These are not city funds, um, but this is a mechanism that is available to developers and, and uh, future landowners to finance infrastructure. Um, but uh, these are assessments that folks opt into um, um, that are again requested um, by um, the developers. Um, to create bonds to build that infrastructure. So it's, it's one way for developers to finance their infrastructure. But these are not city funds. We just facilitate the public hearing for, for this to be considered. Thank you. And at this time, item 9A is open. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition? Please come to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. 
Seeing none, is there anyone who wishes to speak in support or in favor? Please step to the mic, identify yourself, and proceed. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and return it to council for comment and action. Vice Mayor. Move to adopt the resolution. You have a motion, please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Next item, please. Council and Mayor statements. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, there have been a number of uh, council referrals made at various committee meetings. And after a conversation with our city manager, um, I'd like to invite my colleagues on the council to entertain a new uh, practice in that the chair of each committee will come back to the full council and restate those referrals that were made at uh, various uh, committee meetings so that the full council understands the, the referral and the path ahead. And so uh, tonight I'll model that uh, with regards to the Housing and Homelessness Committee. Um, there was an item on the agenda for Tuesday's meeting regarding a discussion uh, of the downtown capacity analysis. And so uh, in my review, I felt it was better uh, suited for the Planning and Development Committee. And so I'll be making a referral tonight that that moves to P&D for consideration and policy consideration given their recommendations. And the second uh, referral tonight comes from Council Member Arias regarding um, the uh, homelessness prevention efforts uh, that uh, the committee would like to see um, happen uh, throughout the city and um, that we develop a, a plan of action. Um, beyond that, I'd like to ask staff for an update on some of our projects, in particular um, Jefferson Park uh, Public Restroom. Several constituents have uh, been eager to see uh, the construction started and I'd like to ask for an update on that particular project. Um, um, I'd like to also give uh, kudos to our streets division team uh, during our um, exceptional weather event on Sunday uh, with uh, Tropical Storm Hillary. Uh, it, they were out um, pumping streets in downtown Bakersfield and uh, I was out uh, cruising around monitoring different uh, locations that have been frequently flooding and um, they went out right away and it was actually really really well done uh, because we also had a concert in downtown Bakersfield on on Sunday night and so we we're able to mitigate some of the impacts of the localized flooding early enough so that concert goers wouldn't get all wet so I appreciate all the effort and another piece of good news is our improvements uh, to the storm drain on V Street uh, proved to be very effective on Sunday, so that's a, another step in the right direction. We have a lot more work to go, but, uh, but we're, taking, we're taking steps in the, in the right direction. And I wanna thank, again, Public Works team, Mr. Strackloose, your team for all the great work. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I don't see any other requests to speak. We had uh, some good news today. We got a call from Secretary Castro Ramirez about a large award that we received. We received more than $7 million from the state to assist individuals living in encampments to move them off the streets into st safe and stable housing. So the city of Bakersfield, we're very grateful to the state for the assistance to address our homeless housing, mental health, and substance use crisis. This encampment resolution funding will move homeless persons off our streets and highways into housing with supportive services. Over the past years, through the resources and partnerships such as this, we're grateful that the city has been able to triple our shelter bed space rapidly, expand our street outreach, and address the impacts of homelessness we know there's much work that remains to be done and we will continue as a city to pursue creative and lasting solutions to this statewide crisis. And with that, good news, we stand adjourned at 627. Oh, Council Member Freeman, it's not working, is it? Uh, quickly, um, uh, this is for Mr. Clegg. 
And um, <clears throat> I'm sure you've already done this, but in the spirit of never assume, um, does our police for uh, does our fire department have a plan, training, uh, a method of dealing with some sort of an ex unexpected event, fire uh, in the downtown area like Lahaina? Do we? I keep telling everybody, I'm sure our fire department would be better organized and know what to do. But I would, I would hope that if if we don't, you would at least talk to them to be sure we have trained and drilled for something like that so we would know what to do. I think it comes from our Freeman, uh, our fire department, uh, it goes through extensive training, regular trainings, um, and I would, I would argue police and fire probably you know, conduct some of the most rigorous trainings of, of our teams. Um, we actually have what's called a city emergency operations plan. Um, unfortunately, it hasn't been updated in some time, although fire department has updated their response plans, but actually council included money um, in this budget to go and complete an updated emergency operations plan just so that we make sure that that's tight and, and, um, and dusted off and allow us to also do some um, training exercises citywide with all of our department heads as well because when you open up a uh, an emergency, you know, operations center, uh, you need to call on several departments to support something that's that big. And so we're actually doing a refresh right now. Well, if it would probably be good to do that sooner than later, only because you never know. Could happen tomorrow, could happen, you know, you just never know. It's always unexpected. Uh, second thing is, uh, and I don't know if you can talk about this, this, this uh, Kerner Golf Course. This has been going on for how many years? And I've written the post to Mr. Clegg, can't anybody sit down and solve this thing? They don't pay, uh, you know, they don't pay the city for the water for the golf course, period. That's what it is. They should be paying us. I mean, I assume, unless I'm just, unless you're forbidden to talk about it, it does seem sort of separate from the lawsuit. Why can't we solve this thing? I mean, did they just say, we aren't gonna pay you come hell or high water. We don't care if we owe it to you or not. It just seems bizarre that we can't get this silly thing that keeps coming back. And I think the Sierra Club has become so irritated with this thing uh, that they make other hostile actions against us. It's like something that just really bugs them. And I mean, it kind of bugs me. I simply don't understand why we couldn't ever solve this unless there's something else going on that, you know, behind the scenes that none of us know anything about. Because none of us up here, want, I mean, it's really nice that they get free water and have for many, many years for the golf course, but I mean, I don't know why we can't give them our cheapest rate or something and just solve this thing. So uh, what, I, what I would say is just a couple things beyond what I shared earlier. Uh, this is actually in a county area, not a city area, so it wouldn't be city, contract city purveyed water. Um, we have recommended some physical changes to the pump station that's above this weir as was noted. And we have recommended a potential solution that the county could pursue to you know, mitigate this. Uh, at this stage, it's in the county's hands. Um, I, I won't say more beyond what I you know, kind of shared earlier is that um, Absent, perhaps you know so, some city formal advisory or action to the county, um, are kind of that that would be the next step. We I think we've done our, our good faith to try and recommend these solutions. So, are, so are, are they in a position where they simply they just take the water? It isn't like we can stop it or anything. They just take the water and don't pay for it. <laughs> uh, that that's where we're starting to get into the potential litigation realm. Um, but that's, I mean, again, I think, I think that's the final remedy available to us is through the courts. Okay. I just, you know, whatever. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Freeman. Vice Mayor. Uh, in an attempt to help us move this along for council, I'm going to ask that we agendize this for a closed session and a future board meeting. Council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. And then for clarification on that award from the state, it was actually awarded to the Bakersfield Kern Regional Collaborative, and we're a part of it. Thank you very much to the collaborative team, to Anthony Valdez, Nina Carter, and 
all those who contributed to it. It was more than $7 million. And with that, we stand adjourned at 632. <laughs>